Hey guys, so today I'm going to be going over the common polyatomic ions. I'm going to be showing you how to memorize each one of their formulas, charges, and names by using the periodic table. There is a trick called the T43 trick. And the T43 trick looks like this. Um, you start up here and you make a T in the upper corner. And then we're going to make a 4 underneath it here. That's the 4. And lastly, we make a 3. That looks like that. Um, so this is the T43, and I'm going to be using this. If we start with this, um, because carbon is in the T, that tells me that carbonate is going to have 3. So T for 3, first letter of 3. And that tells me that all of the things that are in here are going to combine with oxygen with 3 oxygens in order to make their A-T-E endings. So we have carbonate, nitrate, and of course when we have nitrate, we also have nitrite. It's lighter version. Remember when you're lighter, um, you have less oxygens. And then we have silicate. And we have also in this group hydrogen carbonate. Okay, so out of this T group, we get these polyatomic ions. And so what the T is telling me is that my carbonate is going to be CO3 because it's 3. So uh, we get CO3, so we can do that. Hydrogen carbonate is always just an H with the same formula. Nitrate is going to be NO3. And then whenever we have a nitrite, we subtract an oxygen, so that's going to be NO2. And then lastly, silicate is SiO3. So the next part of this is figuring out what the charge is for each of these polyatomic ions. And so what we do is in the T, right within the T, we're going to go minus 3, minus 2, minus 1 gets written across the T. And so this just only applies to what's in the T. So carbonate is going to be 2 minus. Silicate, because it's in the same column, is also going to be 2 minus. Nitrate is going to be 1 minus. And we know that nitrite has the same charge as nitrate, so this is also just minus. And remember, you don't need to put the 1, although I did put it there for nitrate, but you don't need to put the 1, just minus is fine. And then lastly, our rule here for hydrogen carbonate is that when you add a hydrogen to it, and you have the hydrogen here, that moves the charge more positive, one more positive. So this would be HCO3 minus, because I would do minus 2 plus 1 would be minus. So that's my T of my T43. Now moving to the 4, I'm going to look through all of the elements that are in my 4. 4 tells me that there are 4 in the ATEs. Okay, so in my ATEs I'm going to have 4. So this has phosphate. And when, when we learn phosphate, we actually learn a ton of polyatomic ions because we also have phosphite and we have hydrogen phosphate, hydrogen phosphate, and we also even have dihydrogen phosphate. So all of those come from this one phosphorus here. We also have sulfate and sulfite, and then incidentally we have hydrogen sulfate and hydrogen sulfide. So these are all polyatomic ions that we need to learn, and they're all going to come right out of the 4 in this 40 T43 trick. And so for this one, we know that phosphate, phosphate is going to have 4 oxygens, so we know we have PO4. And whenever we have something lighter, phosphite, we know that we have one less oxygen. So phosphate becomes phosphite PO3, 
Also, we have sulfur, so we have sulfate, and that we know that the eights have four oxygen, so this is SO4. And then ites are one lighter, so this is SO3. And then remember when we do hydrogen phosphate, we keep phosphate and we just put an H in front, HPO4. And then so dihydrogen phosphate, di just means two. So we do H2PO4. Okay, they're all just using phosphate as their root. For hydrogen sulfate, we just put an H in front of sulfate, so HSO4. And for hydrogen sulfite, we just put an H in front of the sulfite, so that's HSO3. And then for their charges, this does the same thing. We go minus one, minus two, minus three up here, and then on our next row, we start again. Minus three, minus two, minus one, like that. PO4 is three minus, because it's in this row. And so is PO3, three minus. So when we change the number of oxygens, it does not change the charge on our polyatomic ion. Sulfur is in the negative two column. So this is minus two, two minus, and also two minus. Now, if you recall, this is the, um, the second part of this, is that when we have a hydrogen in front, it makes us one more positive. So if this was PO4, three minus, then it's HPO4, and now it's gonna be two minus. And if it's H2PO4, that makes us two more positive, so H2PO4 minus. And for hydrogen sulfate, we have HSO4, this is minus, and hydrogen sulfite, HSO3, that's also going to be minus. Remember, we're just one more positive than the partner. So at this point, what we're going to do is look at our threes. In our three section, we really are only looking at chlorate. We're going to see chlorate here. And this seems like it's not giving us very much, but chlorate has so many variations. So chlorate is going to be CLO. And then because it's in the three, we know that it's ClO3. And because it's in the minus one, we know that it's ClO3 minus. So that's chlorate. But if you look at the polyatomic ions, we also have chlorite, which is going to be lighter, right? So that would be ClO2 minus. And then we have two extras, okay? We have hypochlorite, and we have perchlorate. So these are some extremes on chlorate. Hypochlorite is like, this is like extra, right? You're even extra chlorite. So we're going to take off even one more oxygen. So this is just going to be ClO minus. It's one, one oxygen. And perchlorate is like extra chlorate, so it's going to be even more oxygens, ClO4 minus. So at this point, we have done so many of these polyatomic ions. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to take a second and we're going to go through all of the ones that we have already determined from the periodic table. Dihydrogen phosphate, we got hydrogen sulfate, hydrogen sulfite hydrogen carbonate, nitrate, and nitrite, hypochlorite, chlorite, chlorate, perchlorate, hydrogen phosphate, sulfite, sulfate, carbonate, phosphite, and phosphate. All of those are handled just in this one setting. The ones that we have not done yet, okay, so we're going to call these ones no trick, we have acetate, which is CH3COO minus. Cyanide, which is just simply CN minus. Hydroxide, which is OH minus. Permanganate, I'm just gonna go over here for a second. 
and say that I remember permanganate because it is MnO4 minus, which is just like what perchlorate is, but with manganese instead. We have oxalate, which is C2O4 2 minus. Chromate, which is CrO4 2 minus. I wrote those backwards. Dichromate, which is Cr2 O7 2 minus. Oh, and I should have had silicate. Silicate gets marked because it's here. And then the last one is the only positive one, ammonium, which is NH4 plus. So for chromate and dichromate, I just remember my twos, my one and my two. I, in my personal opinion, think that these three are kind of the hardest ones to get memorized. To remember, you just need to kind of grab on like some memory tricks there. But all of these, all of these polyatomic ions can be easily deduced from the periodic table. And so that's really what I wanted to talk to you guys about today was just that now that we know these polyatomic ions, now that we have these memorized, we are going to be using them to name more ionic compounds. So ionic compounds form with these polyatomic ions in them. And so we need to know the names and charges of these polyatomic ions so that we can name and come up with the formulas for those compounds. So you're going to be using this list, which um, this is one way to memorize the list. Um, you can use the T43 trick. We're going to be using this list in order to do our polyatomic naming.